serving uh, when I started with this tennis management company. The guy who started it did our training program. I served all through college, locked in, and I was thinking I'm going to crush every serve. And I had chronic elbow problems. It was not good. And the only fix that we made was I went. I used to go from here, locked in, and then I just made a wrist break. And I had. I had Cases increased on my serve. So just that tiny little bit of information made a huge difference on my game. So it is effective, it does work, and we're going to get into the specifics of what everybody does on the different courts. Okay? What about open or closed stance? Open or closed stance on serve? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this side, I like to line up with my right foot just to touch behind because that lines me up. The box on the right side. I'll tap the right foot a little bit further over just so I'm comfortable with that box. That's the only right thing. Yeah. Um, Are you okay with a little peach samples under my toe? Yeah. Okay. Because I like peach samples. <laughs> We're not all peach samples, but we do that. Um, so as long as that front foot's anchored, that's what we're looking for. Okay? Any other big questions, sir, boss? Without further ado, I will give the court to John Weston. All right, so, uh, when you're facing a serve like Quinn's, time is of the essence, right? I don't have a lot of downtime to try to sort things out when the ball's on route. So what we want to really focus on is anticipation. How do I kind of make things easier my, for myself on the front end? One of the things I like to do is make sure I'm not in my field. Before the serve comes, getting my toes just a touch inward. I want to feel like I'm kind of out over my skis a little bit. I might even feel like I'm going to kind of fall on my chin. Okay? Two things. The second thing I want to do is I want to really kind of be, feel like I'm light on my feet. I'm almost rocking in anticipation. I don't want to be kind of hunkered down. I really want to, I, I like to think kind of my weight's on the inside of my knees and my thighs, and I'm not kind of getting outside myself. Again, kind of why we, I like to put my toes in. If we're returning for doubles, I want my belly button lined up at my return target, which is cross court. I see a lot of people when they're playing doubles square to the target, to the target and they can't understand why the ball is running away from them. Does that make sense? You with doubles particularly, you want to be in a kind of a 45 and cut that ball off the pass. Off the pass. When, the, when the toss goes up, so do I. I really want to make sure that when Quinn toss goes up, so do I, and then I split the moments on his strings and come forward. And by the time the ball's crossing the net, I want to feel like I have a beat on it, forehand or backhand, and I'm going to go meet it ahead of you and free free. When we are returning serves, it is not a ground stroke. It is very, very abbreviated. Okay? I almost never lose sight of my peripheral vision of my racket. So if I'm going to hit a backhand, it's just split here and finish. Forehand, split here, finish. At my target. It's not a lot of run out. He is providing all the energy. Ball has its own energy. We're just trying to redirect it as best we can at a depth that we're comfortable with. So I'm in, on the inside of my toes. I'm rocking, rocking, rocking. Toss goes up. I split the moments on the screen. I cut it off the pass and I'm going forward. How much work did that look like? Not a ton. Pretty short, pretty abbreviated. We'll go one more time. I don't know where he's going to serve. I'm rocking, rocking, rocking. I split. Not a lot to that. Not a lot can go wrong. It's pretty compact, pretty brief. Does that make sense? Yeah, except the not a lot can go wrong part. <laughs> well, the, the more, but again, but you can see, it's, you know, it's, it's a conservation of energy, you know, drill. That is, I, he's providing the energy. Now, if he's got a weak second serve, then maybe I don't get that to with my feet. So let's, let's, you know, kind of talk about a lollipop serve. So I don't want to just kind of be hanging back. If I think I can attack, I'm going to say, I've got some, I might even chip and charge this. Oh, I'm going to get it. Right? What I do, not much more than a volley, right? Split, volley back with underspin, and I'm where I want to be. Okay? Yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. I'm dancing a chop chop. One way or the other, getting across. All right? Any questions about returning? Anything? What he goes down the middle? Yeah, when he, when he, yes. So one of the skills, and this is not easy, particularly on the juice, 
you'd learn the kind of the inside out backhand, as it were, right? Because what's my number one objective? If we're playing doubles, to keep it out of the reach of the net person. In a perfect world, though, I don't want to necessarily put it out in the out. I want to try to get this thing, if I can, back to Quinn's inside stroke. So, again, same idea. We're, my, my strings never go to here, because I, I want them pretty much at the target just about the entire time. So, Quinn, I'm going to move over so Quinn can find my backhand a little more easily. Quinn, here it is. Not a whole lot more than that. Now, um, let's say a guy got close to the line. Yep. You want to get him down the line. Yeah, well, you definitely absolutely want to keep them honest. If you become predictable with where you're returning, you absolutely keep them honest. Now, that doesn't mean we're aiming for the outside two feet of the out. When I want to keep something on, somebody honest, where do you think I go? Up and over them. <laughs> At the belly. Oh, the belly. I want to bore a hole in them. You watch, you watch the college kids, they are never hitting away from the guy at net. They are trying to make it as uncomfortable as possible to make him hit a defensive ball. Does that make sense? This is doing me a favor. This is, is at the very least getting them back to neutral. Does that make sense? So don't, and you can apologize afterwards, you know, if, if, if somebody's, you know, bringing a lawsuit, you know, against you, you can say that throws it. Silverado told me I'm supposed to get this. My apologies. You got that, Katie? You got that, Katie? Katie, I don't hey, think he, maybe I, I, I think he needs a good talking to. <laughs> she can be deposed. She can appear in court on your behalf. All right? So, but yes, honestly, Katie like, was talking about everybody being nice. That's what you're trying to You're trying to go with somebody's knee cap. Then go from here. All right? Any other questions? Okay. So we'll, we'll divide up into courts. So, when we're, so to start with, we'll kind of work on cross court and deep. When we're playing singles, your return target is just deep down the middle, right? All you're trying to do is move the singles player off their spot. We used to lay a beach towel right in front of the baseline, and if your return made that little thud of hitting the beach towel, you got a point. And it's a great way. Just don't even think about anything else when you're playing singles or returning. Deep down the middle, move them off their spot, take control of the point that way. A question about the serve. Yes? Dealing with the sun. Uh, it's a bright star. It's not going anywhere anytime soon, let's hope. <laughs> right? So adjusting your toss is, you know, it, it has to be part of it. That's why Quinn was right to say, there's no such thing as a perfect toss. We're always kind of chasing, you know, suboptimal tosses. One of the drills I learned, one of the, this was eye-opening, they took a bunch of pros and they had us toss kind of, they had, I just laid the racket down in about the kind of the ideal spot. And, they, and we would toss and we would mark where the ball hit on the frame. You're, no one ever went five out of 10 hitting the strings. Like literally, it's a pattern. It's a, and then this, those of us have been doing it a long time. So we're always chasing a suboptimal toss. It's just gaining the arm talent. So it's all the more critical, like Quinn says, to let's have a kind of a steady, solid base so that our hand can do that, not our whole body trying to you know, stay on top of a you know, long board. Okay. 